Sefi Derokol, um, Seftolozain, uh, Seftolozain Seft Tizobactam, Seftazidim, Avibactam, Imipinim, Silastin, Rilibactam. Don't these names just sound fancy? But no, we're not, we're not going that deep. We'll just focus on the basic, basic, you know. The most important things, the most important antibiotics uh, to use in initial management of sepsis, septic shock, basically empiric antibiotics. And they're usually, you know, more simple than we make them out to be. Watch this video. Hi guys and welcome back to our ICU series. If you're new here, my name is Fatai and I'm a hospitalist working in South Carolina. On this channel, I teach medicine and discuss topics around medical education. So please consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button below and the notification button next to it so you can get the videos as I upload them. In this video, I'll go over how we select antibiotics in the management, in the initial management of sepsis and septic shock. This is the second video in a four-part video series about managing sepsis and septic shock. The general principles in the selection of antibiotics within the management of sepsis septic shock, and I think the selection of antibiotics generally in, in any infectious disease is to think about the common organisms that would most likely cause that uh, particular infection. Um, in the case of septic shock, you want to focus on the most virulent organisms, you know, the ones that you know, would typically take the patient down fastest. And uh, we have the ones that are gram positive and the ones that are gram negative. And we have also some considerations for, for fungal, possible fungal infections. And although rarely, maybe viral infections as well. Uh, but before we go and talk about these specific organisms that are implicated in the management in sepsis and septic shock, let's go about some of the other considerations. For example, timing of the antibiotics. Again, I mentioned in the previous video, you can check that out in the card up here. Um, the, one of the most important things with the selection of antibiotics, or even antibiotics generally in management of sepsis and septic shock, is to give these antibiotics within the first hour. There's a mortality risk associated with every hour of delay uh, with antibiotics. But again, in sepsis and septic shock, because we don't necessarily know what organism is involved. You know, we've gotten our cultures, but we don't have the results yet. Most of the culture results will come back in early as 24 hours after we obtain them. So it's important to think again about the likely organisms or the most virulent ones and then tailor antibiotics towards that particular organism. The goal is to provide good uh, gram positive coverage, you know, and also provide good gram negative coverage and, you know, also consider possibility of a fungal infection, for example, in neutropenic patients that may have some candidal sepsis. Uh, and, you know, again, rarely viral infections. It's usually not. Uh, uh, considered that commonly, but again, if you, every patient is, is different, you have to look at the, the entire story to make that decision. So what are some of the considerations when we think about gram-positive uh, uh, organisms that are likely causing sepsis? The number one organism we think about is our MRSA. Um, MRSA, uh, for example, doesn't necessarily need to be thought about in patients that are hospitalized. We also know that there is you know, evidence of uh, community-acquired MRSA. So when we're thinking gram-positive, this is the one that is perhaps has the tightest antibiotic recommendation, which is your initial treatment with vancomycin. You think about gram-positive, you think about MRC, you think about vancomycin. So when it comes to good gram-positive coverage in the management of sepsis and septic shock, vancomycin is our guy. Is renal dysfunction a contraindication to using vancomycin? No. The first dose of vancomycin, or at least the first 24 hour dose of vancomycin, you know, you can dose it uh, uh, according to, to what the patient's renal function is, and you can just, you know, titrate it accordingly. It doesn't mean you don't use vancomycin. Give them that initial dose of vancomycin, it's not going to hurt them. Um, you also, Moving forward with vancomycin, you can definitely dose vancomycin according to the levels, uh, whether it's the troughs or the random levels, but renal dysfunction is not necessarily a contraindication to using a, uh, a vancomycin, especially in the initial period. Um, if you can't use vancomycin and you feel they, they have history of vancomycin resistance and things like that, uh, the other consideration obviously would be things like uh, linozolid and uh, daptomycin. Although daptomycin doesn't re really penetrate the lung tissues pro properly because it's degraded by surfactant. Yeah, that's a fancy thing to know 
go look it up. Yeah. It's also important to know that vancomycin has good coverage uh, uh, amongst um, a lot of other gram positive organisms. When we think about gram negative coverage, obviously with thinking of the most virulent gram-negative organisms uh, that are likely implicated in septic shock. For example, pseudomonas. Um, when we're thinking about pseudomonas, we want to use an anti-pseudomonal agent, but we also want to use an anti-pseudomonal agent that has good coverage uh, for a lot of the other gram-negatives. So our top choice for that would be things like cefepime. So in patients with sepsis, septic shock, the initial antibiotic should typically have cefepime. If we're not worried about pseudomonas, yes, ceftriaxone might work, but how sure are you? So vancomycin with cefepime, vancomycin for gram-positive coverage and cefepime for gram-negative coverage uh, would be ideal. If the patient is also neutropenic, it may also suggest the risk of having a pseudomonal infection, so you also want to consider that. So generally, to be on the safe side, vancomycin and cefepime is, is usually a good choice in the initial empiric uh, antibiotic selection for patients in sepsis and septic shock. Um, when you then think about fungal infection, again, what, make, what, probably, what would probably make you think of a fungal infection, you think about you know, patients, again, neutropenic patients are at risk of candidal, uh, systemic candidal infection. Uh, so you want to add a good antifungal agent. Um, the one I would suggest is one of the echinocandins because the echinocandins have good coverage uh, against some of the rarer, uh, candidal species uh, uh, like uh, uh, Cruce and uh, Glabrata, I believe. Um, so, a kind of candidus will be your guy. Microfungin is a good example. Um, again, you have to have clear suspicion that they are susceptible to a candidal infection, and that's why you're adding the antifungal in the first place. It's not a routine thing that we do. Ideally, good gram-positive gram, good gram-positive coverage and good gram-negative coverage uh, uh, with cefepime and vancomycin would, would be sufficient. Um, with viral infections, it's, it's usually rare, but if you have suspicion that they, they probably, you know, uh, implicated uh, the viral infection is implicated, then you you can use uh, a viral agent to also cover. But most of the time, we just focus on the bacterial infections. These are our common options. Um, when it comes to selecting antibiotics in patients with sepsis and septic shock. Um, I appreciate you guys for hanging around and watching this video. Um, I host weekly live IG sessions. You can feel free to check that out as well on my handle here for TIMD underscore or check out m more of my contents on Residence School by an Instagram page. Um, I appreciate you guys once again. Subscribe. Subscribe, damn it. Come on. I'll appreciate it. Thank you very much.